you enjoyed the explanation of soaps and detergents. And now it is time for cosmetics and medicines. They say the most beautiful things come in a bundle of two. Gifted with talent, this karate kid and her painter friend will color your world of imagination and set your creativity soaring. Presenting to you the masterminds, Garima Bhavnani and Sanya Salim. Hi, Garima here. We all like to look beautiful, isn't it? It feels so nice when someone says, you're looking so pretty, especially when you're dressed for that special occasion. It definitely boosts our spirit and we feel positive. We feel confident and for once, life becomes more meaningful and fun. Oh, never realized that looking good can bring in such a big transformation. I think that it's everyone's right to look beautiful, to be admired, to be appreciated. And it is not only about girls, even boys want to look smart and handsome. Today, that wish can be fulfilled so easily. All of us can look gorgeous in today's world. And of course, all the credit goes to chemistry. Today, we are going to learn more about cosmetics and their ingredients. Cosmetics means a skill to decorate. In a more general term, we can say that cosmetics are substances that enhance or alter our appearance. It is used to groom and beautify our body, thus contributing to the sense of well-being. Cosmetics also mean substances that can be applied on our body, either by rubbing, pouring, sprinkling or spraying. Talcum powder, face powder, lipsticks, nail paint, perfumes, shampoos, oils and creams are all part of cosmetics. Before starting with our detailed study, let us examine some of the cosmetics closely. Talcum powder, shampoo, perfume, nail polish, moisturizer, water. Let us understand about the use of water in cosmetic industry. Most of the products that we use are water based, whether it is a shampoo, face cream, moisturizer or a deal. Water helps in making the product lighter and disperse easily. For example, when I spray this perfume, I am actually spraying perfumed water. Any durant is made up of water, a few drops of essential oil and an emulsifier and of course a few other ingredients. I hope you know the meaning of emulsifier. If you are not sure, then check in our previous video on soaps and detergents. Coming back to perfumes, we know that they are made up of oil. For example, rose oil, lavender oil, jasmine oil, sandalwood oil, etc. So, if we use these oils directly, then our skin will feel oily, our clothes will get stains and so on, and the real objective of smelling great will be missed. Similarly, this moisturizer feels so light and glides so easily on the skin because of the presence of water. Moisturizers contain 65 to 85% water. Another advantage of having water in the moisturizers and creams is that it balances the water that is evaporated from our skin and keeps the dry skin from becoming more dry, which may lead to so many skin related diseases. Though we have sunscreens for that, but moisturizers also help. Bevax, olive oil, grease roll, and petroleum jelly are commonly used moisturizers. Also, moisturizers protect us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. That reminds me of titanium dioxide which is used in sunscreens and in many other cosmetics. Apart from protecting our skin from ultraviolet rays of the sun, it is also used for thickening, whitening, lubricating and has a strong absorbing capacity. Another advantage of titanium dioxide is that it is resistant to discoloration when exposed to sunlight. Titanium dioxide is also used in nail paints and lip color. Titanium dioxide when mixed with mica flakes adds as a glimmer. Glimmers are used in cosmetics to make our skin shimmer and shine. It gives that very special glow to the skin. That reminds me of the glitter work that I did on paper. Want to check it out? Then don't forget to log on to my Instagram or Facebook account. Coming back to cosmetics, there are many thickening agents. They provide stability and overall performance of the cosmetic. Tearic acid, carnauba wax and gum are some natural thickness. Whereas silica gel, magnesium aluminium silicate are examples of mineral thickeners. Oh, now I know why it stays there. It is because of the thickness. Now I am going to apply some shampoo on my hand. Do you know why it foams? 
there are other things that form due to the similar reason. If you know any of them, then write in the comments below or mail us to advantagesmastermind at the red gmail.com. They all form because they contain sodium lauryl sulfate which is a petroleum product. It can also be obtained from coconut or palm oil. Well, though it is very useful in small quantities, but its constant use may be carcinogenic. I hope you know the meaning of carcinogenic. It is something that can cause cancer. Sulfates are known as skin irritants and may also lead to skin corrosion. And this is talcum powder. Do you know why we call this powder as talcum powder? And why not body powder, skin powder or something else? It is called talcum powder because there is a substance called talc present in all the talcum powders. Talc is a mineral which is made up of hydrate magnesium silicate. Though talcum powder helps in giving a glossy finish to our skin, but it may also be harmful. It is because the mineral talc contains asbestos. And we all know that asbestos contains carcinogenic properties. Carcinogenic, remember. So, even though cosmetics make us look good, but the best advice for any makeup, whether it is a shampoo, a kajal, a cream, or a powder, one thing we must remember is that we should not use it much and secondly, always remove the cosmetics going before going to bed. And in case you have any side effects, then consult a doctor. Do not take any medicine without doctor's prescription. Medicines. Well, that's the next topic, so please don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Sanya here. Do you know what are they? I'm sure there is no one out here who has never consumed medicines. They have become so integral to our life that life without them is impossible. Just as there is a dress for every occasion, there is a medicine for every disease. Medicines are substances which are used to cure, treat or prevent, or prevent diseases. They are either obtained from plants and animals or they are made from chemicals. Then, we med then the medicines are extracted from the natural sources like plants. Then they are also known as herbal medicines. There are variety of alternative medicines like Ayurveda, Siddha, Yonani, etc. But when the medicine is made from minerals it, uh, or other chemicals, then it is known as allopathic medicines whatever this source may be one thing is sure that there is a wide variety and therefore it is better to categorize as antibiotics antipyretic antihistamines antiseptics antacids analgesis antimalaria etc antibiotics are chemical substances produced by various species of microorganisms and other living substances they are capable for inhabiting the growth of the killing bacteria it was in 1928 that alexander fleming a scottish scientist discovered this wonder drug called penicillin though the discovery was purely by accident but it proved to be one of the greatest scientific discoveries of 20th century it is said that this discovery happened when fleming was on vacation and when he returned, he found that one of the petri dish which had germs was completely contaminated with mouse forces that annoyed him at the first of the beginning. But later, when he observed the dish closely, he found that there were no bacterial diseases near the mouse. Fleming isolated the mouse and the, identified it as a rare strain of penicillin. Today, there are many drugs which belong to the family of penicillin. Penicillin, X, G, F and also ampicillin, amoxicillin and mefacillin are all part of the big family of antibiotics which is used for inhabiting various bacterial diseases. Even though these antibiotics help in treating various bacterial infections, they may become inactive in treating other diseases. Can antibiotics treat a viral infection? If you know the answer, so write it in the comments below or you can also mail it on advantagemasterminds.gmail.com. There are some antibiotics which can be used for the treatment of fungal or protosome infections. Even though antibiotics are lifesavers, 
they may also be equally dangerous how is this possible okay each time we use take an anti we use and take an antibiotics we increase the chance of the bacteria able to resist of the infection especially if it is starts mutating later you can get the infection which antibiotic cannot cure therefore it is important to finish the course of the medicine properly antibiotics can be administered in different ways one of the way is topical application such forms of drugs are powders creams ointments another way is oral administration that is in the form of tablets syrups and capsules effective way uh, that is the injections whatever the method may be but this the right doses are very very important as you can see there are many types of medicines here there is a medicine for pain fever acid medicines that relieve pain are called analgesic for example paracetamol and aspirin medicines that help to reduce fever are called antipyretic for example paracetamol and aspirin again if you want to watch my turmeric milk recipe then please go to my instagram account These recipes are very simple and easy to make and because they are made from natural sources they will not cause any allergies allergies well it reminds me about another class of medicines which are called antihistamines antihistamines are medicines that prevent or cure allergies reaction examples are bilastine though we have come to the end of the topic but i know i have to explain a little more and that is about otc right that means these medicines do not require a doctor's prescription and can be purchased directly like other item so is it safe to consume such medicines to some extent they are but these medicines should be consumed in recommended doses only Nolo six fifty and Crocin are also OTC medicines. They they are they are banned in many countries. There is a high risk of these type of drugs to show side effect as it is a combination of chemicals without any scientific understanding. It is a rightly said. There is no pill for every ill, but there is ill for every pill. So please be careful. Take care, build your immunity, and be safe. Hope you all enjoyed my presentation. Please do not forget to watch my immunity booster videos. And in case if you like that, so please hit the like button. Thanks for watching my video.